Hey everyone, this is James Huang, Cycling Tips Global Tech Editor, and we are here in Sedona, Arizona for the Cycling Tips Gravel Bike Field Test. Now, of all the gravel bikes that have been introduced recently, the Chamois Hagar is definitely one of the most controversial ones out there, and definitely one of the most eye-opening because of how different it is. But is it different for the sake of being different or different for the sake of being better? We'll find out in a minute. This kind of funny looking bike right here is the Evil Bicycles Chamois Hagar, which in case you didn't understand the reference is a nod toward former Van Halen frontman, Sammy Hagar. Now Evil is a mountain bike company through and through, and not only are they a mountain bike company, but they have a reputation, very well earned I might add, of being one of the most progressive brands out there with some crazy geometries and some very forward thinking. So when they decided to come out with their very first drop bar bike into the gravel market, what we have here is basically what you would expect from a company like them. The geometry is very, very unusual. And if it looks like basically a hardtail mountain bike with drop bars, that's more or less what it is. You can see right away, the bike is extremely long. It's designed to run with 45 to 50 millimeter stems, but the total cockpit length is the same. So basically the front triangle is just really long. The head tube angle is also extremely slack at 66.6 .6 degrees, haha. -ha. Uh, and then the resultant 93 millimeters of trail is massive. Now compared to a regular gravel bike, what you have here is a much, much more stable and longer front end. The front wheel is just way out in front of you. And the idea is that you can just have a ton of stability and capability as compared to other gravel bikes, which are basically kind of softened road bikes for the most part. You also have 80 millimeters of bottom bracket drop, which is quite low. Uh, again, for more stability and confidence when you're on loose terrain, you have a super, super low drop top tube for more standover clearance in case things get kind of rowdy and rough. And then it also gives you more room for a dropper seat post, which is conveniently actuated by the left hand shifter, which you don't need on this particular bike because it's one by. Now, the bike also has a ton of tire clearance. Now the bike is built around 700 by 50 mil wide tires, which is huge. Yet despite that, the back end is still pretty tight. It's only 425 millimeters for the chainstays, which is again, very short for how big a tire that is. Um, I mean, there are some caveats. You can't run fenders with tires that big, and you also have to run a one by drivetrain with tires that big. But still, in most cases, you can run a really big tire. And this bike can more or less go wherever you want it to go. So a few other neat features on this bike are mounts for just about anything and everything you can want to carry, including six to seven bottles, depending on the frame size, a top tube feed bag mount. You can do fenders and a rear rack, uh, which should pretty much get you covered through a whole day. Uh, there's also a threaded bottom bracket at the bottom and then uh, rubber guards on the down tube and chain stays So when things get bumpy the frame doesn't get too beat up Now despite all that capability the bike is actually still pretty light uh, Evil claims a frame weight of 1432 grams for a medium painted sample with hardware uh, Which is pretty good all things considered and then this particular bike here in a small size uh, is 8.71 kilos with Shimano GRX 800 and WTB aluminum clincher tubeless wheels. All things considered, pretty good. That's, those are solid numbers. Now, Evil being a smaller bike company, they don't have as big an array of complete builds as some of the other bigger brands. So in this case, for the Shami Hagar, you have your choice of two complete bikes. You have this one here with Shimano GRX for 4,800 US, or you can also get it with SRAM Force Axis Wireless for 5,900. Uh, there's also a bare frame set option if you want to build it up yourself for 2800 US. Welcome back to the 2020 Cycling Tips Gravel Bike Field Test. We've been riding these bikes all week here in Sedona, Arizona, and we are now shooting here at the Sedona Beer Company because we have been riding these bikes and now it's time to talk about them. Dave, one of the most interesting bikes, maybe the most interesting bike that we talked about here or that we rode here is the evil Shami Hagar. Yes. What did you think about this bike? What did you like about it, first of all? I liked how progressive of a bike this is. I mean, it really, looked at what was out there in the gravel market and just threw that book out the window. It is so different to anything else we had on test. It is so different to anything else you and I have ridden really. Uh, and it's quite cool the way it handles 
terrain that you normally wouldn't want to take a gravel bike on. Yeah, I mean, you and I both decided that, you know, the Shami Hagar is basically like the downhiller's gravel bike. Um, it has that super, super slack front end. It's really, really long. It's low. The front wheel's way out in front of you. The trail figure is massive. I mean, the, it, it is so stable when you're pushing it really hard or on steeper stuff, which I found was really cool when you were pushing it really hard in slippery corners. I mean, a lot of the places around here, you can go from like really good traction to no traction. You'll hit like a, like a, like a, you know, like a little deep hole of moon dust. But on that bike, you can just slide the front end and just keep pushing it and then it'll catch and pull you it around. Just holds. It was great. Yeah. Um, I guess I also found out, I mean, Evil says this too, that you know, even when you're not on super gnarly terrain, it does feel in a lot of ways like a regular gravel bike. Like it pedals really well and the, the riding position is totally normal. Yes. Um, it's also a little quirky though. It is. Uh, I think there's some things that they did an amazing job on like that long front center the long reach with the really short stem i think that they're onto something amazing there however i think they might have gone a little bit too far with that head angle i mean you and i both kind of felt like a 66.6 .6 degree head tube angle is i mean really pretty middle of the road now for a mountain trail bike yes for, for a regular trail bike these days and on a gravel bike with drop bars even with a short stem like it just doesn't quite feel like it works as well I mean, you know, Kaylee was talking the other day about how on a gravel bike with that kind of geometry, it feels like you're on your trail bike with the fork locked out and kind of like with your tires pumped up way too hard. Yes. How did you describe it? Like it almost was like you were drunk at low yeah, speed? Yeah, it was like the bike was intoxicated and you're trying to get it, you know, get it to stumble home to, yeah. to find its way home. It it's was kind of just wandering all over the place. It, it almost felt like Evil chose that head tube angle almost like to giggle that it was 66.6 .6 degrees like it there there does seem like there is this middle ground because the the next the next slackest bike in our group was probably what more than two degrees steeper mm -hmm. and it does feel like there really should have been sort of this middle ground that they could have hit i mean it wouldn't have been like all like giggly haha our, our head tube has a 66.6 .6 degree angle but it seems like it would have worked better yes and, and i guess the other issue that we had is while you get while you do get all this awesome stability the bike feels like it was designed by someone who i hate to say it like has never designed a fully rigid carbon bike before because it is really lacking in any sort of real compliance and oh, yeah. it's so chattery that by the time you're going fast enough to really take advantage of of that kind of really cool handling front end yeah. at high speed the whole bike skipping yeah the whole bike skipping everywhere you don't have any traction like you know you're your fillings are getting rattled loose, so to speak. I mean, it, it's just too harsh. Yes, and and we really realized that when we used our Continental Control tires. So we, you know, Evil say to use that bike with a 50 millimeter wide tire. And that's we, what it's built around, but yeah. I mean, we put a 40 millimeter tire on, which is the exact same tire that we had on all the other bikes, the exact same pressures. And at that point, you're like, this is the stiffest riding bike we have on test. By far. Yeah. I mean, when we put the 50 mil tires back on, then it, it, it got better for yeah. sure but it, we never lost the sense that that bike is way too rigid. I guess the other thing that's kind of curious about that bike is, I mean, it's build is sort of a, you know, really kind of do everything sort of bike. I mean, there's all these mounts on it and whatnot, but in making that frame so low slung, mm -hmm. they've basically taken away a lot of the ability to carry stuff. Like if you want to run a frame bag on that thing, you basically can't carry anything. There's no room inside the main triangle. Yeah, yeah, especially on the size we, we reviewed. You know, the larger sizes, sure, you might be able to fit some more, but. You know, we reviewed a lot of gravel bikes that were effectively the same size that you could fit a lot more bags on. Right. I mean, so I feel like overall, we felt like that bike was just, they had a really, really super cool idea yeah. and just took it a little too far. Yes. What about the spec? I mean, did, did Evil do a pretty good job on the spec, you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the one by GRX, it's, it's really hard to fault. Right. They're making use of the GRX dropper seat post lever. So if you do want to drop a post on a gravel bike, then you've got the left hand brake lever to use to control the dropper. And I think that's a really nice feature. However, didn't really feel the need for the dropper post on this bike. No, we really didn't. I mean, I, I run a dropper on my mountain bike to the point where I almost can't ride a mountain bike when it doesn't have a dropper post on it. And I just never felt like, I think it was because the bike was so chattery that I never really felt like I was really comfortable dropping the seat post when I was going super fast because at that point 
I almost really did want that little bit of extra control of having that saddle kind of like clamp between your legs sort of thing. Um, so it almost seems like I would have been better off running a regular rigid seat post, but in a smaller diameter so that you can get at least a little bit of compliance out back. Because, I mean, that bike really was pretty rough. And I guess, to me, I feel like it was kind of telling. I mean, there are all these glowing reviews of that bike everywhere. And if I look at where that bike was initially launched, it kind of makes sense because where they were in Arizona, it was a lot, it wasn't quite as rough. I mean, it was, you know, definitely smoother, faster trails. It was still loose, but it didn't, they weren't really someplace where, where it would be really rattly. All right, Dave, so given all of that, yep. who is this bike for? It's 100% for the mountain biker that probably hasn't ridden a drop bar bike before who may be coming off an enduro bike, who spends their days pedaling an enduro bike around, or perhaps even a downhill bike, and they're used to pedaling a very slack bike uphill, they will feel at home on this bike. Who it's not for is the road rider used to a drop handlebar bike with an agile feel while you climb. They will not have a good time on this. Yep, I agree. Well, that's our assessment of the evil bicycle of Shami Hagar. If you like this video, please click subscribe and stay tuned for more videos from the 2020 Cycling Tips Gravel Bike Field Test.